good morning students let us start the class in the last session i was discussing in detail about the frequency response of an amplifier and i have put this slide uh, here on the screen so that you will recall whatever was discussed in the last class let me not discuss this further because we had a very detailed discussion in the last class let me go to the next slide f1 and f2 are called as lower and upper cut off frequencies they are also called as half power frequencies please remember whatever i told in the last class it is p by 2 equals vi by 2 equals v by root 2 into i by root 2 that is how that 0.707 of the maximum gain is coming there so as it is corresponding to p by 2 it is called as half power frequencies and the reason for this half power i had already told in the last class this is because they are marked on the gain curve at 0.707 of av max which is equal to 0.5 of ap max ap is uh, power gain and ap max is maximum power gain the midband of an amplifier is defined as the range of frequencies between 10 f1 and 0.1 f2 let me go back to the first slide here you can see here this 10 f1 and 0.1 f2 after which the curve becomes almost non linear in between 10 f1 and 0.1 f2 the curve is linear so that way this is a very safe region where we can operate the amplifier without any reduction in the gain that is why in general this 10 f1 in between 10 f1 and 0.1 f2 that is considered as the mid band region the voltage gain at the outside of the mid band now the voltage gain within the mid band is ab maximum the voltage gain at the outside of the mid band can be obtained as ab equals ab mid divided by square root of 1 plus f1 by f whole squared into 1 plus f by f2 whole squared where f is the frequency at which we want to find out the gain and f1 is the lower cut off frequency f2 is the upper cut off frequency using this formula we can find out the gain at the other frequencies which are away from the mid band region but this formula is not really much important for us because we are mainly interested in only the mid band gain and the bandwidth f2 minus f1 so Uh, you don't have to bother about how we derived this formula the derivation of this formula is not in our curriculum as such and we are not going to use this formula also extensively as such i have put this only for you to know that there are such formula which exist in our analysis now you can see now this is a direct coupled amplifier you have already studied operational amplifier in the first year op amp is a direct coupled amplifier in the sense in case of an op amp so as the op amp is a purely dc amplifier there will be no coupling capacitor internal circuitry of the amplifier also is completely directly coupled means inside the chip or inside the integrated circuit of the operational amplifier there are no capacitors within why there are no capacitors within that question i cannot answer now because you are going to study in much larger detail about the inner design and inner construction of the operational amplifier in the coming semester in the fourth semester you are going to study a course called linear integrated circuits there you will study op amp and its applications in much larger detail so there you will understand why there is no coupling capacitor in case of op amp now as there is no coupling capacitor in case of an op amp we can say that right from zero hertz there is going to be gain you can see this here i had told you in the last class that the reduction in the gain at the lower range of the frequencies is because of the blocking and coupling capacitors dc blocking and ac coupling capacitors which are in series with the signal i had told you that x equals 1 over 2 pi fc and when f f is very less 
X is very high. But in the case of a direct coupled amplifier such as op-amp, there is no coupling capacitor, there is no DC blocking capacitor. So due to this reason, XC does not come into picture at all. So even at zero frequency, right from DC till F2, the gain remains constant. But the gain later on is going to fall down. This is because of the internal stray capacitances. I had discussed about the junction capacitances and the wiring capacitances, which we also call as parasitic capacitances. Now those parasitic capacitances are part of any particular electronic circuitry, we cannot completely um, get away from them. Because wherever we use any active devices, we will have one or the other junctions, whether it is BJT or JFET or MOSFET. Even in JFET, we have a reverse biased uh, gate to channel junction, right? Even in MOSFET, we will have such junctions. So in that way, we will have these parasitic capacitances always and at times we will have parasitic resistances also because we will not be using gold and platinum as our conducting wires whether it is outside the chip or inside the chip. In our home we are going to use copper wire only as a conducting wire even for electrical uh, connections. Just because gold and platinum are very good conductors we cannot use them they become very expensive for usage. In the same way, inside the integrated circuit also, we are going to use copper only as the conducting material or the wire. Now the copper will have a finite resistance. When the copper has a finite resistance, that resistance also becomes a parasitic resistance now. That is how in the higher frequencies and in the lower voltages, we will have these parasitic effects with our circuits. So in the case of a direct coupled amplifier, until F2, the gain will be constant. Afterwards, the gain is going to reduce because of the parasitic effects. Now for such amplifier also, we have a formula AV equals AV mid by square root of 1 plus F by F2 whole squared. That is because that F1 is right now 0. So uh, it does not come into picture here in this formula. Of course, again, you need not remember this formula as such because we are not going to use it uh, further. Direct coupled amplifier is called as DC amplifier as it can amplify DC signals. Op-amp can amplify DC signals. Op-amp can be used as a AC summing amplifier as well as a DC summing amplifier. As a AC subtractor as well as a DC subtractor. Op-amp can be utilized even to amplify DC voltages. So, in that case, it can amplify DC signals. It is called as direct coupled amplifier. Actually, it is one of the purposes of op-amp that there is no coupling capacitor there because we will be using op-amp as the DC comparator in our future circuits. When we use this as a DC comparator, naturally, we want the DC to be passed to the circuit. Then we cannot have coupling capacitors there. That is the purpose of usage of a PAM. So as the coupling capacitor is absent, there is no lower cutoff frequency which I have been telling you. A PAM is a DC amplifier with high voltage gain, high input impedance and low output impedance. More about a PAM will be covered only in the fourth semester. Now let us see the unit called decibel. The name bell was given to honor the Alexander Graham Bell who invented telephone. Alexander Graham Bell along with this assistant Watson accidentally invented telephone. The scientists, they have their own habit of talking to themselves when they are working. They keep on focusing on a particular work. So, uh, Alexander Graham Bell was in one room and his assistant Watson was in the other room and the, both the rooms are connected by the electrical wires and they used to do experimentation in both of the rooms. Uh, one day, the assistant Watson was working with some experiment and he suddenly saw 
some two copper reeds are vibrating inside his room. He was not understanding suddenly how these copper two copper reeds are vibrating. And these two copper reeds were connected through a copper wire to the adjacent room where Alexander Graham Bell was working. Now Watson went to the Alexander Graham Bell, Bell's room where he saw that Alexander Graham Bell was talking to himself when he was working with some experiment. And whenever Alexander Graham Bell was talking, at that time Watson observed that in the adjacent room the copper reeds were vibrating. Later on, Watson told it to Alexander Graham Bell. And Alexander Graham Bell thought, what is happening? Whenever I am speaking, why is it vibrating? And both of them diagnosed that particular experiment and they came to know that whenever Alexander Graham Bell was speaking, that was actually connected to a small thin copper wire there and that copper wire was slightly vibrating. That vibration got converted into electrical current and that electrical current was going to the other room also making the other copper reeds to vibrate. So by means of Alexander Graham Bell's habit of talking to himself, they invented a beautiful device called microphone. Microphone in the sense, the one which is small and one which can convert sound into electricity. And later on, they developed an equipment called telephone. Okay, so these are all very interesting incidents which happen in the scientists' lives. To honor Alexander Graham Bell, even now in USA, we have Bell Laboratories in USA. And to honor Alexander Graham Bell, they have kept the name here as Bell. And why the name Desi? Desi means we are going to use the common logarithms. Common logarithms means to the base 10. So when we use to the base 10, it is easy for us. 10 squared is 100, so log of 100 is 2. 10 cubed is 1000, so log of 1000 is 3. Now in our amplifier, we will have gain right from 100 till maybe 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh, 10 lakhs, that way it can go on. When we have multi-stage amplifiers, we can have much larger amount of voltage gain. I had given you the examples of the satellite signals. If a GPS satellite is around 18,000 kilometers away from the earth, now that GPS satellite is sending the signal down, uh, you can imagine the amplitude of the signal which is received at the earth station. Similarly, a geostationary satellite which is around 36,000 kilometers away, you can Im imagine the signal that is received at the earth station. Now if a spaceship is crossing the solar system, you can imagine the signal which is sent by the spaceship and that particular spaceship is sending the signal all the way to earth and how much minute amount of voltage can be detected at the earth station. So in such amplifiers, they are basically RF amplifiers, <laughs> they are basically radio frequency amplifiers. In such amplifiers, uh, we need multi-stage amplifiers as such and our gain can cross 10,000 or 1 lakh or much more than that. Now how do we measure such larger gain? It is better that we use logarithms for measuring such gain and we can plot a frequency response curve using the logarithmic graph sheet. I am going to show you that later on. So the power in decibels is 10 log of AP. We take the log of the power gain and we multiply by 10. This is the definition of decibel. Deci means because of the multiplication and the logarithm in, to the base 10. And bell is to honor the Alexander Graham bell. Now, There is slight disturbance here. Anyway, uh, the factor into 1, then it is 0 dB. That means if there is no gain, let us say output power by input power are same. Then there is no gain. That means log of 1. Log of 1 is 0. That is how if it is into 1, then decibel is 0. If it is into 2, then it is plus 3 dB. Why? Let us say 
it is uh, 10 by 2 10 sorry 100 by wait a minute 10 log ap if the multiplication is twice then let us say we get 2 here log 2 to the base 10 is 0 0.3010 right if this ap is twice means into 2 imagine the output power is 2 watts input power is 1 watt then it is 2 by 1 is 2 log of 2 is 0 0.3010 0 0.3010 into 10 is 3.010 that 3.010 0 0.010 0 can be ignored now we say if the power is double output power is double that of input power then we say that it corresponds to plus 3 db power gain similarly into 4 then it is plus 6 db power gain it is log of 4 to the base 10 into 10 that is plus 6 db similarly into 8 is going to be plus 9 db now what do you observe here when the power gain doubles here in the decibel it gets added by 3 db that is why at times we also call this a uh, lower cutoff and upper cutoff frequencies as 3 db frequencies why you can see that here into 2 means it is plus 3 what if it is into uh, into uh, 2 power minus 1 or into 1 over 2 if the power becomes half then the same thing corresponds to minus 3 db it will be a reduction in 3 db from the maximum gain okay i hope you got it into 2 corresponds to plus 3 db whereas into 1 over 2 corresponds to minus 3 db similarly into 4 corresponds to plus 6 db into 1 over 4 corresponds to minus 6 db so any doubling is going to have an effect of 3 db there now into 10 is going to be 10 db why eap is 10 so log of 10 is 1 1 into 10 is 10 db that means when any gain becomes 10 times we will have effectively 10 db gain now into 0 0.5 corresponds to minus 3 db as i already told you the same 2 if it is 1 over 2 it is 0 0.5 log of 1 over 2 is log of 2 power minus 1 where you will get negative sign there now into 0 0.1 is going to be minus 10 db why this 10 is going to become 1 over 10 here so 1 over 10 is 0.1 that is going to correspond to minus 10 db which means you can say now or you can understand that if there is no gain then it is 0 db now if there is lesser gain than unity then it is going to correspond to negative decibel factors and if there is a larger gain more than unity it is going to correspond to positive decibel factors this way we can easily plot a frequency response using plus sign and minus sign that is the advantage here now let us come to the voltage now power in decibels is going to be measured using 10 log of power gain but we know that p equals v into i so when p equals v into i naturally what happens is when we split power into its voltage and current counterparts we will slightly change this formula to 20 log of av av is the voltage gain now we will multiply this by into 2 whatever is this particular equation for power we will multiply it by into 2 why because power is equal to voltage into current so even ai db also can be 20 log of ai it is not just that only the voltage gain will be having 20 log of uh, v, uh, v naught by vi isn't it similarly we can have current gain also 20 log of i naught by ii but we will not be measuring current gain so easily because it is not it is not easy to see the current waveform on the oscilloscope it is very easy to see the voltage waveform on the oscilloscope Similarly, it is very easy to measure the voltage using a voltmeter. It is difficult to measure the current using ammeter because ammeter has to be connected always in series. Voltage can be simply connected in parallel anywhere in the circuit. That way, in general, we will discuss only voltage gain and then we discuss power gain. We in general don't discuss current gain. 
Now the factor in case of voltage gain is into 1 is corresponding to 0 dB, you already know. Into 2 is going to correspond to plus 6 dB. Why? Because plus 3 into 2. See, plus 3 into 2 is going to be plus 6. Here we used to call those frequencies as half power cutoff frequencies. We used to call them as half power cutoff frequencies. The reason is we used to measure, mark those two points F1 and F2 corresponding to half power or corresponding to 0 0.707 of AV. That you can find out here also. When we have this 20 log of AV, that is because of that. Now, when into 2, it corresponds to plus 6, into 4 corresponds to plus 12, into 8 corresponds to plus 18. It is simply the double of the uh, decibel factors which we discussed in power gain. Into 10 corresponds to plus 20, into 0.5 corresponds to minus 6, and into 0.1 corresponds to minus 20. That way you can see here, into 0.5 is corresponding to minus 6. So, there we can relate this power curve as well as voltage curve in terms of the frequency response. Let us discuss the cascaded stages. I have been discussing the cascaded stages or multi-stage amplifiers because we want to have larger gain when we connect two amplifiers in series. For example, let us say I have input as 1 millivolt here. Let us say I have the gain of 100 here. 1 millivolt into 100 is going to become 100 millivolts here in the output. Now, 100 millivolts here, again let, I, let us have a gain of 100 here. 100 into 100 millivolts is going to be 10,000 millivolts at the output here. 10,000 millivolts is nothing but 10 volts. That means when I have, when I had 1 millivolt input, I had 100 times and 100 times, then I have the gain of 100 into 100, 10,000 times. So that way, 1 millivolt became 100 millivolt, 100 millivolt became 10,000 millivolts. I can get a gain of 10,000 times if I have two amplifier stages having gain equals 100. Now that is the advantage of cascading or that is the advantage of multi-stage. But now the issue here is when we have one more stage, now the gain will become much larger. We will not be able to plot the graph for a gain having 10,000, right? In a y-axis, how can you have a gain of from 0 till 10,000? Similarly, in the x-axis, when we have frequency measurement, we have to have an x-axis also which is quite lengthier where we can go from 0 hertz till 1 megahertz, 1 gigahertz, 1 terahertz. That is going to be difficult for us. So, we are going to use a special type of graph sheet. I am going to show you the picture later on. Where in the y-axis, instead of the normal gain, we are going to convert the gain into decibels and we are going to plot the gain in decibels. Why? Just look at this. 10 times gain is going to be 10 dB. But what about 100 times gain? 100 times gain is going to be 20 dB. What about 1000 times gain? 1000 times gain is going to be 30 dB. For every 10 times increase, the gain is to going to increase in decibel with only plus 10. Now, in the graph sheet, in the y-axis, we can simply write 0 plus 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50 that way. Now, that is not corresponding to the actual gain. It is corresponding to the gain in decibel. That way, in case of the cascaded stages, even when we have 10,000 times or 1 lakh times gain, we can convert it into decibels and we can easily plot the graph. That is the purpose of using decibels. If you have any questions in between, you can always put it in the chat box. Otherwise, I'll assume that you have been uh, understanding all these concepts and I'll proceed. Now, AV is AV1 into AV2. Let us say AV1 is 100, AV2 is 100, it is 100 into 100 is 10,000. But when we take it in decibels, AV in dB is AV1 in dB plus AV2 in dB. Now, this log of 100, 
and log of 100. We can take it that way. 1 millivolt became 100 millivolt. Gain is 100 here. Log of 100 is 2. 2 into 10 is 20 dB. So 20 dB gain here and another 20 dB gain here. That means in the decibels, the gain is going to be added. It is going to be 40 dB. Why? 100 into 100 became 10,000. Log of 10,000 into 10, that is going to be 40. Log of 10,000 is 4. 4 into 10 is 40. So, normally when the voltage gain is getting multiplied, in the decibels, we can simply add it. When we can simply add it, we can measure the bigger gains also with the smaller number when we use decibels. That is the advantage. Example, if AV1 is 100 and AV2 is 200, then AV total is 20,000. 100 into 200 is 20,000. AV total in decibels is 20 log of 20,000 is totally 86 dB. Look at this. 20,000 times gain in voltage is actually corresponding to 86 dB. That way a large number can be converted into a smaller number using decibels. Now, AV1 dB is 20 log of 100 that is 40. AV2 in dB is 20 log of 200 that is 46. So, naturally, when we add it in the decibels, 40 plus 46 is becoming 86, which means multiplication in the normal uh, terms is going to become addition in case of decibel terms. That is the idea here. I had told you about this impedance matching, right? When the source impedance matches the load impedance, there will be maximum power being transferred. Now, in this case, you can see the source will have an impedance called RG and now this amplifier has this R in and similarly amplifier has this R out, then at the output we have RL. Now, if that maximum power from the input to output should be transferred, then naturally RG must be equal to R in or R in must be equal to R G. Similarly, R out must be equal to R L. So, we will have to design amplifiers which are going to have specific impedances also. In this semester, in our exercises, we did not really design an amplifier which was going to have these many uh, impedances. For the given design, we measured the impedances. Now, you will have to go for the reverse order in the sense for the given input impedance, given output impedance, you will have to design an amplifier. There the choice of those resistor values becomes much crucial. You will be learning about all these things in much larger detail when you come to fifth semester where you will be actually designing such amplifiers. You will be studying two courses called microwaves and radar and microelectronic circuits. In those two courses, you will be studying more about how to match the impedance and how to design the amplifiers for the particular matching of the impedance. I am just giving an example of some impedances. If you have a microwave system, it will have a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. For example, our uh, uh, cell phone is working in the microwave's range. When the cell phone is working in the microwave range, any microwave transmission line, even inside the cell phone, near the antenna of the cell phone or the mobile phone, there is going to be a terminating impedance, there is going to be a characteristic impedance. That impedance for a microwave system is 50 ohms. Even space is going to have its own impedance. You are going to learn more about when you come to third year. But even the coaxial cable has got its own impedance. Let us say you have a cable TV at home and the cable is connected to the television. Now the cable in the middle you will have a conducting wire. Around it you will have a plastic insulating protecting material. After which you will have a wire mesh. After which you have one more plastic protective material. That means between the center conductor and the ground shield. It is not a ground wire now, it is a ground shield. Between the center conductor and the ground shield, there is a special plastic material. 
and afterwards the whole cable is protected by the outer plastic sheet. Now this coaxial cable also will have its own impedance that is called characteristic impedance. You will study more about characteristic impedance in other courses. I cannot discuss about what is the meaning of characteristic impedance in uh, analog electronic circuits. Okay. Anyhow, you are going to learn more about this Z0 in the other courses such as network analysis or microwaves and radar. So, co coaxial cable also has got its own characteristic impedance called 75 ohms. Briefly, I will tell you what is the meaning of characteristic impedance. Otherwise, you may ask me, sir, please define at least. I am defining it. Now, a coaxial cable can be modeled as L, R and C. L, R and C. Because a wire will have a parasitic inductance. Around any conducting wire, there can be magnetic flux being induced. You already know the Linzer's law. Now, wire will have its own resistance. And between the wire and the outer ground sheath or ground uh, mesh, there will be capacitance because in between there is an insulating material. So always a wire can be modeled as RLC, RLC, RLC. A big uh, 100 meter coaxial cable can be modeled as small, small fragments of RLC, RLC, RLC. Now if at all you find the impedance this, of this cable for a given segment that is RLC, that is called as characteristic impedance. For the coaxial cable, the characteristic impedance is 75 ohms. Now, this 75 ohms, if let us say this RL, let us say this amplifier's output is connected to a coaxial cable. Now, the coaxial cable itself is working like a load. Later on, there may be one more amplifier. Now, this is the load which is corresponding to coaxial cable's impedance. Now, this RL itself is 75 ohms. If you want to have a maximum power transferred, R out of the amplifier must also be having 75 ohms. That is the idea. There is something called a twin lead. Twin lead means two wires going together. In general, for a telephone, they connect two wires adjacent to each other. Its impedance, characteristic impedance is 300 ohms. It is slightly larger. Why? These two wires are running in parallel. When the two wires are learning in parallel, naturally there will be more capacitance. Because when these two wires are running in parallel, in between them there is this plastic insulator and continuously there will be capacitance between the two conducting wires, between the main wire and the ground wire. So wherever you have two wires connected together, then that is going to, going to be called as twin lead. Right now, my earphone and microphone are connected through a twin lead wire to my laptop. Now this twin lead wire will have 300 ohms characteristic impedance. But on the other hand, my mouse to the laptop is connected through a coaxial cable. <coughs> In the sense, the mouse is a, a cylindrical wire. In the cylindrical wire, in the middle, there is a uh, conducting wire and around it there is a ground sheet. Now the coaxial cable which the mouse is using has a characteristic impedance of 75 ohms and the uh, headset which I am using is using a twin lead wire. Now naturally inside the laptop there must be impedance matching for both of these conducting wires such that maximum power will be transferred. Similarly, the telephone system will have a characteristic impedance of 600 ohms. In the telephone system, they will go for a twisted pair cable. Twisted pair cable in the sense, they will take two wires and they will twist the wires around each other and gradually, uh, maybe through the telephone pole to pole in the rural areas or in the urban areas, telephone wires are only now coming underground. So, when they run all these wires, when it comes to a junction box somewhere, there is going to be a switch box somewhere, the street corner. And there, they will terminate all these cable wires and all those wires are twisted pair cables. So, such cables will contain still larger characteristic impedance that is 600 ohms. 
So when a telephone is connected to this particular cable, telephone should have the characteristic impedance of 600 ohms only because now telephone works as this RL. When telephone is there as RL, now there is a wire coming from the telephone exchange that uh, source impedance and load impedance, if they match each other, then only there will be maximum power transfer. So a telephone has to be designed in such a way that the telephone will have an impedance of 600 ohms. I worked in a company earlier called Sweet India Teletronics Limited where I worked for 8 years as research and development engineer, as R&D engineer. So there, when we used to design telephones, we specifically used to connect a resistor inside the telephone which was having a value of 600 ohms or 620 ohms. 600 ohms was not a standard value, 620 was a standard value. The 20 ohms does not matter much there as, as such, 20 ohms can be ignored there. So, we used to put that particular resistor 620 ohms which was working as a terminating impedance for the telephone's twisted pair cable. That way, designing a communication system is also as important as designing a circuit. Okay, let me go on further. Maximum power gets transferred when source load impedances, source and load impedances are, are of same value. This I have discussed already. This R, this R, this R, this R. You can see if they are all equal, then maximum power gets transferred. Now, power gain is P out by P in. Output power is V out square by R. You already know that P equals V square by R. So, P out is V out square by R and P in is V in square by R. R, R gets cancelled. V out square divided by V in squared. Is it V out by V in whole squared? So, we can also write power gain as V out by V in whole squared. Now, you know why that into 2 comes there. When we take voltage gain in decibels, it is 10 log into 2. It is 20 log. Why? Because of this V out by V in whole square, that 2 comes this side. V out by V in is nothing but voltage gain. So, AP in decibels is 10 log of AP is 10 log of AV squared. V out by V in is nothing but AV. So, this 2 comes this side. So, it is 20 log of AV. When you take log of AV squared, it is 2 log AV. 2 into 10 is 20. So, 20 log of AV. When all impedances are matched, the decibel power gain equals the decibel voltage gain. If the impedances are perfectly matched, then the power gain and the voltage gain will be one and the same because maximum power gets transferred there. Let us see one exercise. I am showing you the kids which are doing some physical exercise. Now we will be doing a mental exercise. Look at this now. We have a source here. We have this 50 ohms source impedance, then we have a stage 1 having 50 ohms here, then output also 50 ohms, again stage 2 50 ohms, output 50 ohms, stage 3 input impedance 50 ohms, output impedance 50 ohms and the load resistance is also 50 ohms. We have 3 stage amplifiers now. But the first stage is 23 dB gain, second stage is 36 dB gain and third stage is 31 dB gain. Now he is asking Find the total AP and AV and the individual voltage gains. Total AP, power gain and voltage gain and the individual voltage gains for the given stages. Let us find out. The net decibel gain is 23 plus 36 plus 31. That is 90 dB. This is given as a power gain. Why is it given as a power big gain? Because he is asking us to find the individual voltage gains. So naturally this is not an individual voltage gain. Now even though in this problem he has not told whether this 23 dB is voltage gain or power gain. By just looking at the statement you should understand. He is asking to find the total AP and AV and the individual voltage gains. Which means what? This 23 dB is not the individual voltage gain. It is the individual power gain. So, net decibel gain is 23 plus 36 plus 31 is 90 dB. It corresponds to 
AP is antilog of 90 by 10 is you can see this 1 followed by 9 zeros. We are actually finding out the gain in the normal terms, not in the decibel terms. So, we should take antilog of 90. Antilog of 90 divided by 10. Why? AP in decibels is 10 log of output power by input power. Now, that is what is 90. So, naturally, antilog of 90 divided by 10. That is going to be the power gain uh, in normal terms. Let me admit the student who is waiting in the lobby. Now, similarly, AV is what? When all the impedances are matched, look at this. When all the impedances are matched, voltage gain equals power gain or power gain equals voltage gain. So, even AV is also 90 dB now because impedances are matched. AV is going to be 90 dB. So, antilog of 90 by 20. Why? Because voltage gain is 20 log off. Power gain is 10 log off. So, that is how AV is antilog of 90 by 20, that is 31623. Now, AV1 is antilog of 23 by 20, that is 14.1. AV2 is antilog of 36 by 20, that is 63.1. And AV3 is antilog of 31 by 20, is 35.5. You can see, when you add this 14.1 plus 63.1 plus 35.5, then also you will come nearer to 90 dB itself. But you can see the power gain here is 23 dB, but the voltage gain there was 14.1 dB. Power gain here is 36 dB, the voltage gain was 63.1 dB. Power gain in the last stage is 31 dB, the voltage gain is 34.5 dB. So, it does not mean that totally voltage gain will also be same as the power gain for the individual stages. It does not mean that way. Okay. When we consider the individual stages, we are not actually considering the impedance matching there, right? We are only measuring the power gain and voltage gain of the stage itself without worrying about impedance matching. But when we consider total gain, we are considering the impedance matching. Here as all the impedances are matched, voltage gain and power gain are same. Let us see milliwatt and volt reference. We have been seeing watts till now. Let us see milliwatt. There is something called dBm, decibel with respect to milliwatt. P dBm is 10 log of P by 1 milliwatt. Now, why are we measuring 1 milliwatt? The reason is in our electronic communication systems, we are not using power in watts. In the electrical systems such as fan or light or iron box or fridge, or television or even a desktop computer or a laptop computer, we are using power in watts. But in the electronic communication systems such as mobile phone, FM radio, satellite communication, we are not using power in watts. We are using power in milliwatts. Your mobile phone's maximum power can be only 2 watts. Whereas your iron box can have a maximum power of up to 1000 watts or 1 kilowatts, right? It can be 600 watts, 800 watts. Your uh, refrigerated home can also have a power of more than 1 kilowatt, maybe 1.5 kilowatt, 2 kilowatt, up to 2000 watts also is possible. Those are all electrical appliances. Electrical appliances draw a lot of amount of current. Whereas, when we are using communication products, for example, when you use a USB pen drive, it is going to drop, a, it is not going to drop power in watts, it is going to drop power in milliwatts. Similarly, the uh, headset which I am using right now, this headset is not going to drop power in watts, it is going to drop power in milliwatts. Even the mouse which I am using right now to my laptop, it is not going to draw power in watts. It is going to draw in milliwatts. That way, all the electronic communication systems are not going to draw power in watts. They are going to draw power in milliwatts. So, in such a case, we have one more unit called PDBM. 10 log of power by 1 milliwatt. Now, that we call it as DBM. Why we use this term DBM is 
if at all when you measure the power of your cell phone which is working right now it is going to transmit a 2.4 gigahertz radio wave and the 2.4 gigahertz radio wave is going to travel all the way to the nearest base station